Hello world! In this video you will learn what is CSS, how to use it, how it looks like, and how it actually works. I will also show you some examples of the magic that CSS can do for a website. So if you like this kind of content, be sure to hit that uh, subscribe button and that notification bell. So if you don't know who I am and you're new here, I'm Jen from Coding Jungle where we talk everything related to the front end world. Without further ado, come on, let's jump into it. So what is CSS? In the simplest of terms, CSS is, uh, let me go here. Yeah, it's cascading style sheets. Uh, what does that even mean? Well, I actually like to call this as code to style shit. <laughs> so for now, you don't really need to know what cascading is um, or the whole thing of style sheets. You just need to know that it's code that makes websites look pretty. So the syntax of CSS is that you need to have selectors. In this case, let's pretend we are working with an H1. An H1 is an HTML selector for what is a main title. To give you an example, in the Lonely Planet website, the H1 would be what it says, Virtual Vacation Italy. This is an H1. So in order, if we would want to style this or change the color of this with CSS, then we would write something like this. H1, the HTML selector, color, cornflower blue. Yes, that, I, I find that super funny, this name, cornflower blue, but apparently you can, there's tons of names that you can give uh, to colors and they actually work. There's even like a whole page all about the colors and there's really funny ones in here, like, well, magenta's not, nothing special, uh, like peach puff, papaya whip, Peru, there's one chocolate, there's tons here that you can play around with. Um, again, it is not really uh, industry standard to write the names of the colors. We usually use the hex values or RG, RGB values. Um, where was that? Yeah, so again, we're here. So let's look at the kind of like anatomy of what's going on here. So the H1 is our selector, as I mentioned, the HTML selector. And this whole thing from color to cornflower blue, it's what is called the declaration. And a declaration has two things. It has a property, which is in this case color. Other properties could be font size, background, background color, um, height, width, margin, padding. There's tons of these. And there is a value. So what should this be? In this case, we wanted to change it to cornflower blue. So that's pretty much how CSS looks like. Again, if you would want to change the H1 to a different font size, you would add another declaration down here. Now, uh, before we jump on how does CSS work in the website, I wanted to show you a few examples of what CSS can do for a website. So let's start with a very, very, very old, old school way of, of how websites looked. I found this page actually from ECMA International. Um, to be honest, this is a very, very big kind of organization that exists in the world of the internet because they set standards for different kind of um, communication systems, as they write here. But the most famous one is ECMAScript, which is the base or the rules upon which JavaScript was written. So kind of a big deal. But I was surprised to look how their website actually uh, looks like. It, it seems that they got stuck in 1990. <laughs> Nothing really changed. Um, it looks pretty, pretty old, doesn't it? If we compare how this looks to modern websites, you might think, oh my God, something is broken. I have a really cool Chrome uh, extension that is called uh, Developer Tools, and there is here a disable all styles. So let's, do what ha let's see what happens. Disable all styles? <laughs> well, nothing really changed, did it? Uh, I don't know if you noticed, but this was orange before, and now it's black, wow. Uh, this used to be a drop-down menu, and now it's checkboxes, but the rest pretty much looks the same. In case you didn't know, websites, uh, this was the whole purpose of having websites back in the day. It was pretty much just pages that had links to other pages, um, and it was kind of like a way to keep things organized uh, through links so you can access um, things easily. The principle still applies, but obviously the looks have tr changed tremendously in the past years. So here you might say, oh, CSS doesn't do much. But look how much CSS has evolved. I'll show you a super cool kind of like artsy website. Uh, this is from Residente, which is a Puerto Rican rapper that I really enjoy listening to. And he did a super cool album and a super cool project uh, for that album, but that doesn't matter. The important thing here is the website. We're visiting Puerto Rico, the place that he's from. And look how beautiful, you have that background image. You have uh, all this animation. Let's go back in it, I exited accidentally. Um, if we scroll down, you see another big background image. You see this uh, interaction here for this little kind of like navigation on the side. Um, again, you see these pictures, the line. It's very interactive and all of this could not be done without 
CSS. Fair enough. In this kind of website where, website where interactions are so predominant like this, I would, I would pretty much bet that there's JavaScript involved. Um, yeah, so let's try the Chrome extension again, disable all styles, and see how this looks like. OK, so where what happened? OK, remember, I deleted all styles. And remember that styles have to do with backgrounds and everything like this. So back then, there was a background image here. And now it's gone. It's just gray. But if we scroll down, ah, we start to see some images here. The images that were used on the site and were placed differently. Here we have that massive hero image that we saw before. Here we have the text. So as you see, it's not. It's not very impressive, right? And again, if we put the styles back in, it looks amazing. It's such a different experience. Another example that I can give you, a more kind of like standard one, let's look at Airbnb. Airbnb is used a lot in the developer world and they, um, in the sense that their style guides and the way they code, people admire it and, and a lot of things are used from what is produced from the Airbnb developer. So if we look at this design-wise, I think it's a very beautiful website. It's very user friendly, very easy to understand, to navigate. But again, let's try our magical plugin here. Again, it's called Web Developer Tools from uh, the Chrome extension. Let's disable all styles. Whoa, <laughs> what happened here? OK, uh, first of all, OK, I guess this is an SVG image. I don't even know what that symbol is supposed to be. Is it the internet? I don't know. Anyways, the internet, so what's that? Anyway, so here you see image, you see the links here, um, and it looks like broken, right? Super important for you to know is that if for some reason you have some CSS that is uh, not valid or not working, your website will continue working just fine. Because at the end of the day, a website is only links and images, right? To convey a message or, or something. So look, if we would go to, let's go into, I don't even know where to host an experience. So the link still works and I'm taken to another site, which looks beautiful again. Again, let's try to disable that and bams. Now it doesn't look so pretty. <laughs> um, although cool, this still looks pretty nice. I guess that's a big image here. I don't know. Um, yeah, so I guess you get the point. CSS is used to place things beautifully on the site to provide a better user experience. Now, how does the browser understand what CSS is and how does it understand how to use it? Um, I created a very basic explanation. There is a lot that goes under the hood in a browser when a website is called, but I try to strip it down and make it as simple as possible just to convey what happens a little bit behind the scenes. So first things first here, pretend this is our navigation bar inside a browser and we want to go to google.com. First thing, google.com, we hit enter. And the first thing that happens is that the, the HTML is fetched from a server. A server is just, let's imagine, like a computer where its files are saved and they can be served to the whole world. So we fetch the HTML. Now, if you have studied HTML, you probably know that in the top or bottom part of the HTML, you have links to other assets or files. So for example, you can have links to images, you can have links to CSS, JavaScript, and uh, videos and other stuff in it. Uh, for the Again, I'm trying to make this as simple as possible, so we won't talk about JavaScript at all in this explanation. So let's just focus on the CSS. Once the HTML is fetched and the browser has it, it starts parsing it. Imagine that parsing is that the browser starts reading it, right? Like to understand what is, the, what is in that file and how they need to structure the page. After it parses, two things happen at the same time. I didn't know how to convey this, so I put 3.1 here at the top and 3.2 here at the bottom. So just know that this happens in parallel. As it's parsing it, it's creating what is called a content tree. So a content tree looks something like this, a lot more complicated, of course. But in general, it's taking the blocks from the HTML and it's trying to have a relationship. Which one is my parent? Which one is my child? Do I have grandchildren? And so on. As it's doing this, remember, it's reading HTML. Let's say it finds a CSS file. So it goes ahead and it fetches that file from the server, saying, OK, now I found this index.css, for example. I'm going to fetch it. Once it fetches it, it does the same kind of thing. It parses the CSS. It starts reading what IDs do I have, what classes. And here is where specificity comes into play. Because here is where the browser is trying to determine, OK, which rules come before which other rules? Which one is more important than, than the other one? To which elements do I need to apply it? So all this happens in this parsing CSS thing, thing, step. <laughs> so as it's doing this, it attaches the styles to the content tree, but it doesn't really put it on the content tree. 
What I mean by that is a new tree is created and it's called a render tree. I tried to represent here with these little uh, circles that now each node, so each one of these circles, will have styles to it. In this case, this node now knows it needs to be turquoise. This one needs to be this beautiful pink color. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's doing this over and over again. You have to know that not, not the website doesn't wait for all the HTML to be parsed, then it does this, then it does that. This is like a continuous engine running until finally you see a painted website. Paint is pretty much the process that you actually see the elements of the website on your screen. So in this case, I tried to convey a very simple website with a super title, a navigation bar here, some awesome features that this um, page has, uh, the images. So all of this is done by this process. If you would like to have this image, I will leave a link in the description below so you can download it in PNG or PDF format. I don't know yet how I'm gonna save it. Um, if you're interested in having it, you can uh, have it. So that's pretty much the very simple process of how the website understands CSS and uses it. So again, this was a very simple representation of how CSS works. I hope you learned what it is, how it looks like, and how it works. So you'll probably be able to show off with other people when they ask, how is CSS and what is it? <laughs> anyways, if you enjoyed this kind of content, make sure to hit that subscribe. I know I've said it like tons, but anyways, just do it. It's cool, it's one click, it's easy. Until next time, keep on coding. Peace.